So as long as people have dreamed of flying, they've dreamed of doing aerobatics in the air just like the birds. And we're here with Julie Clark today, who's one of those people who've been lucky enough to make a name for herself doing aerobatics in North America. Hi, Julie. Before Hi. we talk about this beautiful T-34, I'd like to ask you, but you were one of the first people that was one of the ladies to operate in the uh, cockpit of a commercial aircraft. Tell us a bit about how that happened. Uh, back in the mid-70s, uh, nobody really wanted to break that mold and hire their first woman. And uh, even though I was very qualified, I'd been flying at that time more than nine years, had um, over 3,000 hours, two jet type ratings. Nobody wanted to hire their first woman uh, for their airlines. So uh, I finally was hired in 1976. So now you go and you spend nine years getting qualified to operate a commercial aircraft with passengers on it and you get a job doing that but that's not enough you decide you want to do air shows. How did you get into the air show business? Um, well before I became an airline pilot I actually flew um, T-34s in the Navy as a civilian flight instructor and so I did that for a year and a half on a contract with the U.S. Navy in T-34s and then right after I got on with the airlines I got involved in competition uh, aerobatics in a pit special and uh, just the hankering of I bought this airplane on a surplus bid in 1976 and I kind of just put it together, but I never really wanted to be an air show pilot. It really wasn't my burning desire. I wanted to be an airline captain. The story of this aircraft and how it came to be your aircraft is quite a story. You mentioned you bought it at auction, but there's much more to the story than just that. Well, I bought it at an auction up in Alaska, sight unseen. And um, just the whole story of bringing it home from Alaska, telling my husband I had done this, and then I um, ended up restoring the airplane, which almost became like an obsession. And it took me four and a half years um, to restore the airplane, did all my own work and uh, cause a divorce, so I can't say that was a good thing, but that's been years ago, so. I endorse 21 great aviation companies besides being sponsored by Chevron, and one of them is my engine, and um, the top of the line Eagle engines out of Redding, California is the Golden Eagle series turbo stratus. So I'm going to show you an engine that you'll probably never see again that's actually gold plated. Give these people okay. out there watching TV a chance to see it oh, right here, here. look go. at that. Yeah. So how many horsepower is this engine? Um, well, it's rated for 285, but they this is actually a polished and ported blueprinted engine, which they don't usually do in airplanes, so it's about, rated for about 310. So it's still really kind of underpowered because I also have to carry one full tank of gas because the, the uh, fuel is not baffled, and okay. the minute you go vertical for a certain amount of time, the minute your hammerhead come back down, that's when the engine quits. To avoid that, you have to have full fuel in a one tank. A full tank of gas keeps it pressurized pounds. to keep it running. So you're exactly. switching tanks during your flight as well? No, I just run it off left tank, but if I have to go up and they say, uh, you're going to fly 20 miles to your air show site, well then I got a plan to fly it off the other tank and then fly on the full tank once I get to the air show site, like over water and things like that. Now there's some guys that I know they're a little bit bigger than you to fly this airplane. They call it a two-handed airplane. It's a fairly heavy it, airplane it, to do aerobatics It's heavy-handed. It's not light at all. I have a T-28. That thing just is so light on the controls. This thing is a dog. Really? I, I mean, it's a nice dog. Sorry. It's a beautiful looking <laughs> but, dog. Um, but it's just very heavy-handed on the controls. That, that's the only thing about it that's kind of negative. ICAS, the International Council of Air Shows, which is the Air Show Authority, they've been saying that um, the air show audiences are actually up this year from last year, like by 12%. That's huge. That's saying a whole lot. And, uh, you know, it's still good family entertainment. It doesn't cost a real arm and a leg. And kids love airplanes. We need to keep the kids. They are, like Chevron says, we have to introduce them to fuel now because they're our drivers of tomorrow. These are our pilots of tomorrow. And if they come to an air show, it's because they love airplanes and they are our future. And we need to keep that going. If I can inspire any people, one child, one show, every weekend, I feel like I've continued to help further our cause in keeping aviation alive and well. The Aviators, for everyone who has ever gazed skywards. For more information on today's segments, visit www.theaviators.tv.